Well, in Turkey's 550-seat Grand National Assembly, legislators voted 356 to 115 uh, in support of the three-month state of emergency. Now, that includes parliamentarians from all three of Turkey's main parties, uh, as well as some independents. The president, the prime minister, as well as other Turkish officials have insisted that this state of emergency will not encroach on the lives and freedoms of the civilians. Yet many rights groups, uh, as well as some international observers, fear that it could, particularly after some 50,000 people uh, were suspended or detained or forced to resign from their jobs uh, following the uh, failed attempted coup last week. As well, some also worry that the government, in particular the President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, could use this opportunity uh, to expand his powers. However, the government does uh, say that this is a step needed to completely cleanse the country uh, of the perpetrators uh, behind the coup. Coup, in particular those associated with the Muslim cleric Fethullah Gulen and his Hizmat movement, who the government do blame uh, for being behind this attempted coup and many other problems that the government has faced in the past. The Turkish parliament has also suspended its membership to the European Convention of Human Rights. Uh, it does again say that it will not infringe on the personal rights and freedoms of the people. And this is not really an uncommon move. Article 15 of the European Commission of Human Rights does allow for a suspension in times of war uh, and national instability uh, and threat to the nation. Some, however, do worry uh, Turkey taking this move due to its checkered past. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how Turkey handles the situation in the days and the weeks, in the months to come. It is a three-month state of emergency, uh, particularly when uh, Turkey knows how closely the international community is watching. Natalie Carney for CCTV in Istanbul, Turkey.